Hello, so my clinical pattern was Morton's Neuroma. Um, it is basically <clears throat> the um, hardening of the nerve and kind of like the third, the second, in between the second and third metatarsal on your foot. Um, can cause a lot of pain and stuff. So the patient demographics for it, the prevalence of it is not really um, reported well. There's not a lot of knowledge on this yet. Um, but the common age is normally seen around 40 and 60 years old, and mainly in women. Um, the outcome tool that they use mainly to measure it is the Manchester foot score for pain. So it just kind of takes in um, your pain levels of the bottom of your foot to kind of help rule in and see if it's getting better or not. Um, history, there is not really a known um, etiology or cause of it yet, but kind of most expected is... Um, wearing tight shoes or wearing high heels for a prolonged period of time if you're standing. Um, it can be common in runners, so like an aggravating factor would be running. Um, it also would be longing or prolonged standing. Um, some easing factors are just kind of massaging the bottom of the foot where it is and resting the foot. Um, the 24 hour pattern is, it's normally better in the morning and then after all day of like weight bearing and putting pressure through your foot, it's going to be worse um, in the evening and at night. Um, for the physical exam, the active movement portion, you'll see some limited dorsiflexion um, as well as passively. And resisted testing, there's not really anything that we can do for resisted testing. Maybe weakness in dorsiflexors, but there's not a lot of evidence for it. Um, accessory mobility, there'll be some hypermobile movements of the ankle, kind of just all around. Neurodynamics, nothing really that we can perform that will specifically pinpoint Morton's neuroma. Um, for special tests, there are um, some certain special tests like Malder sign, which um, does, if it's a positive, that does indicate um, Morton's aroma has a high specificity for it. Um, there's others that you can do to help rule out, such as Tinel sign. So a negative Tinel sign would help you kind of take out the tibial nerve and kind of narrow it down to like further in the foot. Um, some differential diagnosis C's are um, OA in the foot or um, in some of the joints down there. Also a fracture, stress fracture, especially in people who are runners, that could be um, a first thought. Um, diagnostic imaging is good for um, definitely radiography to see stuff like that, MRI and um, ultrasound to see the um, fibrotic tissue of the nerve that may be happening. Um, for referring to a physician, any signs or symptoms, the biggest thing would just be if you're not seeing any improvements with your conservative treatment, um, obviously if there's any other signs or symptoms that are pointing to something that's not, um, musculoskeletal, um, definitely refer to a physician, like, um, with your review of systems, but mainly if the biggest thing is if you're not seeing improvement with your, um, conservative treatments, cause you don't want to just keep, um, trying to improve it when nothing's happening and it may be, um, past what you can do. And so leading into that, some surgical options. You can get a neurectomy, I think is how you pronounce it, um, if all of your conservative treatments are working. However, it doesn't have great results. There's a 30% fail rate, and um, there's a lot of complications that could follow after. You also, it's a surgery on the bottom of your foot, so that takes in um, a lot of factors for people. Um, so yeah.